When it comes to making selections around individual objects within Photoshop, the easiest tools that I have to show you are going to be right here. When we click and hold over this icon right here, we have a lasso, a polygonal lasso, and a magnetic lasso. To start, we're going to use the magnetic lasso. Now, generally speaking, inside of my basic one course, I recommend the students don't use this particular tool. However, they're going on to more advanced masking techniques, which will give them better control. So there's no reason to learn a harder to use tool. However, without spending an extra hour on this one particular topic, the simplest way for you to actually make a very rudimentary selection is to use this particular tool right here. And the way that it's going to work is this. First, I'm going to zoom in on the area that we're going to work on. In this case, we'll use the boat. I click on the tool, which once again, when I click and hold, I have my selection. I'm going to select the magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to click the point that I start and hold down the mouse key. And wherever I go with the mouse, this tool is going to look for color changes and tonal contrasts in order to hold that edge as best as it can. And this largely depends on how accurate your mouse work is. But let me just click and show you. I'm holding down the mouse key as I run along this edge. And what it's doing is it's tracing behind me everywhere that I go. So simply, I'm just going to hold it down, run along the edge. If for whatever reason it doesn't follow the contour the way that I like, we have to keep going. We can't stop and go back. I mean, you can stop and go back, but then you have to start over again. So now, even if your line work isn't accurate, close is generally good enough. So now when we go back to the beginning, we click. Once again, it's now created this shape around the object that I've tried to select. And when you zoom in, you'll notice that there are imperfections going around the outside. We have a bump there. We have a missed bump there. Come along the other side of the boat, we have a missed part underneath. We have this sticking out, this one being selected that shouldn't be. We're missing a corner here. We have an extra corner here. So you can see after we do this, it's not perfect, and we still have to go back in and edit it anyway. So in order to do that, we're going to change from the magnetic lasso tool to the lasso tool. Basically, here's how it works. Look at the cursor on the screen. When I hold down the shift key, notice it has a little plus next to it. That means it's going to add to the existing selection, which we currently have right now of the boat. If I hold down the alt key, notice it gives me a minus, which is a subtraction from the existing selection. Now, if you're working on a Mac, you would be using the command and option keys in order to achieve the same results. Simply look at the cursor on the screen and choose the one that you want. Now, right now, we have the boat selected. So anything outside of the boat, we're going to be removing from the selection. And anything that we want as part of the boat is going to be adding to the selection. So when I do zoom in again, I'm going to select the lasso tool. Now, this bump is including the selection, so I actually want to remove that. And I remove that by holding down the Alt key and simply clicking and dragging around the object and letting go. And now notice, it simply removed it from the selection. When I come around to this area here, we need to add this corner to the selection. So I'll hold down the Shift key. And then we come down and around. When I get to where I'm going, I'm going to let go of the space bar. And then it, and then it returns back to the lasso again. I will hold down the Shift key, which is going to add to the selection. And then I'll just kind of draw along the outside here, come up and let go. And notice how it added that little sliver. Once again, I push down the space bar to move around the image. And we have a little bit of an area down here. So I'll hold down the Shift key, swipe that, Shift key still down, and swipe that. And all we're doing is the best that we can at this point. Now what I want to do is actually remove this chunk from the selection and remove these two protrusions from the selection. So I do that rather than holding down the Shift key, I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And I'm going to click and drag along the shape, come up and around, and let go. And then as you can see, it removed it from the selection. 
I'm going to hold down the Alt key again. Once again, we're going to remove from the selection. I'm going to give it a swipe there and give it a swipe there. As you can see, nothing about this is super accurate, which is why I actually don't recommend working like this. This is really the most basic rudimentary type of selection you could possibly make. But this is all you can do at this point, and so this will at least get you started making some selections in Photoshop. Now that I've gone around the object and made that selection, right now we have a choice of what kind of an edge we want. Right now I have a feather of two pixels, which means instead of being a hard edge, it's going to have a little bit of a drop off. So basically there's just this very fine edge based off of one or two pixels where it just gives this very fine edge of softness. And in many cases that's actually what you want. We want some sort of feathering. We don't want it very, very hard. So once we have this selection made, I can hit the control zero, which allows me to zoom out again and see the whole image. And then now we see that this boat is selected. Now at this point we can use one of the adjustment layers, which will allow us to make tonal or color changes. I'm going to randomly select one. I'll use levels. When I click on it, it opens up the properties palette. Now I can grab the slider for dark and bring it down. And notice how we've added all this density or tone to the darker areas of the image. And the more I go, the more it's going to fill in. But now I'm going to leave it like that for a second and zoom in on this image by holding the control space bar, which is the key command for the magnifying glass. I'm going to click and zoom in. And I simply want you to see what our selection looks like. When doing extreme changes such as this one, we will see this type of haloing effect. However, when we bring it back to something a little bit more normal, you don't actually see that edge. So don't beat yourself up over it if it isn't absolutely accurate. More often than not, what you're actually doing is simply moving this slider in order to create either the color change or the tonal change. And as long as you're fairly close, you can more than likely get away with it. With the lasso tool by itself, Simply, wherever you click and drag, it's going to follow along and create that shape. When you let go, that's what it's going to create for you. Now, the first time we use the magnetic lasso, because generally it's a little bit easier because it goes by contrast, the lasso tool simply runs wherever you put the mouse. So it's not trying to connect to anything. It just simply is going where you go. And this often creates these imperfections right here. So you don't actually want to use lasso tool in most cases. You would just use it as a touch up type of thing. However, there is one other tool underneath here that we haven't talked about, which is the polygonal lasso. And the way the polygonal lasso works is this. If I click a point with the mouse and let go, it actually creates this anchor point for us. So right now I'm not touching anything and we still have this line and it's waiting for me to click a second time. It creates a point and now it's waiting for me to click a third time. And basically the way that this tool works is you create these click points and you follow along the contours as best as you can. Sometimes you can make longer straight edges, sometimes you have to make more frequent short clicks and it creates these points which are otherwise straight lines which we can then come back to the beginning and let go and then it creates the selection for us. So once again in the same context of these other examples, I can click on the polygonal lasso, click once, and it's simply waiting for us to do something, and we click again, and click again, and click again. Now, this way requires more time and more clicking. However, it's often easier to use this tool than it is to use the magnetic lasso, and that's simply because that tool is completely out of your control. This one, you at least have some opportunity to make sure it falls within the area that you actually want to do. So it's completely up to you the way that you want to use this tool. And you would go all the way around until it goes back to the very beginning again. And then you see that the icon changes to that little circle uh, saying it's a closed loop. And then we click and then now here is our selection. The benefit to this is you may not necessarily have to go around again and clean up the edges because you took your time the first time. When you've completed, make sure that you add a feathering to it. Generally, one, two, maybe four pixels. It completely depends on the size of your image 
and it depends on the look that you're actually going for. Now, as I already mentioned, this is a rudimentary way of making selections, and if you would like to learn the proper way of doing masking using color range and quick mask, I teach those skills inside of my Adobe Photoshop Basic 1 course. But learning all these skills is an evolution to make you a better photo retoucher.